Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech and iOS 16.5 beta two has been out for a few days. I've been using it full time on my 14 pro max and iPad pro. We'll talk about the overall experience, bugs, battery life, and more based off my experience and your experience in the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 8,600 votes. We'll also take a look at some Apple news and what to expect next as iOS 16.6 is in testing and iOS 17 is coming up soon. Now this past week, of course, we had a bunch of different releases. We had beta two, but we also had tvOS 16.4.1. It brought bug fixes and more, and that also rolled out to HomePod OS 16.4.1. You can see the updates here and they're available now. I need to install them on my home pods. And also, of course, I talked about the AirPods update to 5E133. So that released bringing some bug fixes, overall connectivity and very fast Mac back and forth to iPhone switching. So that was great. Now, as far as iOS 16.5, the overall features have been fairly sparse so far. So far with beta one, we gained turning on screen recording using Siri and the news app has a new sports section in the bottom of the UI with beta two. We no longer have a beta profile. I didn't mention this in the initial what's new video, but the beta profile is actually gone. And even if you install it, it sort of uninstalls itself with a reboot. You are also able to install the updates this time around with 50% battery when it's not plugged in. So that's great. It works for your iPhone down to 20%. Now iOS 16.6 is in testing, which is something we didn't really expect so soon. Mac rumors and other sites are starting to see it in their analytics and it means that it's in testing. Maybe we'll see 16.5 sooner than we think move into 16.6 betas, but we'll have to see what happens. As far as overall app updates this week, I wanted to talk about a few different things. Now, Spotify gets an update this week. So if you're using Spotify instead of Apple music or something else, there's a new lock screen widget that they've added. We haven't had widgets for Spotify yet. So now we have that. If we go into the lock screen, it opens up Spotify right away. If I close out of that, go into music, go back to the lock screen, it goes directly into Spotify. So that could be helpful if you go into that quickly, but I really was wishing they would add a little bit more functionality with that. Now, Apple card savings account may be coming this week based off code found by Aaron P 613 on Twitter based off the code. It looks like April 17th could be the day they actually launch it with April 18th, bringing Chinese Apple pay transit cards as well. So we could see those added to Apple wallet this week. We've been waiting for the Apple card savings account for a long time, and it may finally arrive. Also, if you're using HBO max, maybe you have a subscription for that for game of Thrones or something else. They're changing the name to just max. I'm not sure that's a great idea, but it looks like something that's actually going to change. Also, you can see, I have swift key here. This is being integrated with Bing AI chatbot. So if you're someone that uses swift key, you can sign up for that. You'll see here, Microsoft swift key keyboard AI powered tools available. So it says, if you want to try it yourself, sign up for the Bing preview waitlist by signing into swift key or at bing.com slash new. So if you want to try that out, that's available now. Now we've been hearing a lot of different rumors about iPhone 15 bringing different buttons. Now we know that we're going to have USB C as Apple has to comply with different rules for that. We should have a titanium frame, but there's been a lot of back and forth between different leakers as to what the buttons will have, whether they will be current sort of physical buttons or haptic based buttons and getting rid of the overall silent switch. It looks like Apple's going to get rid of the silent switch with a button, but it would be a physical button and they may have gotten rid of that altogether. There's conflicting sources, but I think this is a little more exciting in one way in the sense that we just don't know. And it brings a little bit of mystery as to what to expect next. When we see it in September, Apple has to get all of the production things ready, get the whole line ready so they can manufacture millions before it's released in September. So they have to get everything finalized and ready now for that later. So it looks like we could just still have physical buttons, but they may change some functionality with the silent switch. Either way, I would love USB C of course, we'll have dynamic Island on all the phones and I would love to have titanium as it would make it a little bit lighter, but let me know what you want specifically with iPhone 15. We should get upgraded cameras as well. Hopefully they have a little bit better focus distance as you do have to back these up quite a bit compared to what we had before. Also, I wanted to mention a couple of things I mentioned in the what's new video, and that's the new stores opening up in India. So you'll see here, 
Apple Sackett opens Thursday at 10 a.m. And you have some new wallpapers here. Again, I'll link those in the description with a new playlist. And additionally, Apple BKC opens Tuesday at 11 a.m. Now this is in Mumbai and it appears that Tim Cook will be available at both places to open up these stores, the first stores in India. So if you're going and you can take pictures, let me know and I'll maybe feature those in a video. I would love to see what they're like and what it looks like once they open up the stores as they look like they're in great locations. Now, iOS 17 had a bunch of leaks this week. I had a separate video about that and we heard a few different things. The great thing is the number one leak was that supported devices don't change and it will be a stability update first. It will be focused on stability overall, which I think would be great for iOS. We haven't had that in a long time and we really could use some stability overall. Additionally, it would have a redesigned control center. We're waiting for that updated focus modes, a redesigned health app, which would be great. I'm not sure we need that too much, but also maybe interactive widgets. That's maybe going to happen. Accessibility changes, dynamic Island updates, maybe with messages there and more notification changes, and then maybe the camera app itself will be updated also. So all of those things are expected plus more, but I think Apple will have a few surprises and I'm really excited that they're actually keeping things sort of hidden this time around. Most people don't seem to know a hundred percent, but that leak seems to be pretty accurate. Stability is something I would want the most. Now, as far as iOS 16.4.1, that's been out a few weeks at this point released to the public. And most people say it's fairly stable, but there are still some bugs here and there. Most of those bugs seem to be resolved with iOS 16.5 beta two, which I've been using since it released. So 16.4.1, definitely has a few issues. Most people report better battery life, but in general, Apple needs to really focus on stability. Like I said, as far as iOS 16.5 beta two's experience, well, it seems to be improved as far as overall stability. It's fairly stable. The phone is acting as you would expect with the exception of a couple different things. Of course, they fixed that weather bug last week or so, but there are some bugs that remain. I'm hearing that the alarm bug is back for some people as far as the alarm not working properly. So if you are running a beta, make sure you set additional alarms. It's working for me, but some people are saying it's not with sleep modes and more. And just make sure you have an additional device if you really need to wake up for something as it seems like it may be a bit buggy. Also, one thing I had an issue with today is I woke up, had to make some phone calls and had zero signal. If I turned off Wi-Fi, it actually, instead of giving me 5G or 4G, went to SOS. I had zero signal whatsoever. It actually took a hard reboot for my cell signal to return. Then I could place calls again and receive calls. So this was a big bug that some reason wasn't working. I thought maybe there was an outage with my carrier, but it turns out it was the phone. So it's working properly now, but it wasn't earlier until I did a hard reboot. Also, people are complaining about notification glitches again, where it just sort of stutters and doesn't work as expected. So that's something that they're working on. Hopefully they'll resolve very, very soon. When it comes to the photo processing, this seems to be better as I'm hearing less complaints. So if we take a screenshot, let me turn the light off here. We'll take a screenshot take a photo and let's see what they look like compared to one another. They look pretty close. So I think it's improved, but Apple hasn't mentioned a thing. I've heard less and less complaints, but let me know your experience. Hopefully they'll actually address this in the update, but honestly, they haven't said anything. So maybe they're just ignoring it. As far as the overall storage bug, I wouldn't really call this a bug at this point. Many people have said, if you go into storage, you go to general and then iPhone storage, and then give it a moment to process. And then we'll wait for this. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see my system data is taking up zero, which I don't know that I've seen this before, but either way, this is cache storage to help Apple improve performance on your device with different apps and more. So as long as you have additional storage to spare, it can use that. It will go up and down. Mine's gone up to 20 gigabytes now down to zero. It will use it as needed. So it's not really a bug unless you can't install an app because it's too full. So it's just something Apple's using as a cache storage. And that's why it's all the way at the bottom because you don't typically need to look at that. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.5 beta two, I'd probably still recommend against it as there's those few critical bugs, especially the alarm. If you're using that regularly, that could be a problem. So maybe if you have a secondary device, then you could use it, but I probably would recommend against that overall. As far as the overall release of the next beta, well, that we don't know for sure. However, iOS 16.5 beta three probably will be this coming week. 
Apple typically does every other week with the early betas, sometimes from beta two to beta three, it's just a week. Sometimes it's two weeks. We won't know that until next week, of course, but if they do release it, expect it Tuesday or Wednesday, probably Tuesday at this point. Additionally, iOS 16.6 is in testing, like I said, so maybe we'll have an early release of 16.5, maybe by the end of this month or early May with 16.6 betas starting shortly after that. Many people were thinking 16.5 would be the last one until we see iOS 17 beta one on June 5th at WWDC, but it looks like we may have a few more surprises yet. Why we would need an iOS 16.6, I'm not really sure, but it looks like that's what's going to happen. Now, as far as overall battery life, it's been a bit disappointing for me on beta three, at least the reason I say that is I've tried to change quite a few things. I found that the lock screen was actually turning on quite a bit with different notifications. So I've adjusted those heavily and still haven't seen great battery life. If we go down to my battery life here, you'll see battery health and charging. I'm at 97% health. And while the updates don't affect that, having the charge go down quickly does affect that in the amount of cycles you have. You can see here with coconut battery, I have 157 cycles. And so it's been used quite a bit, but it's definitely going down faster than it did on previous versions of iPhones for me. Typically I wouldn't go down to 99% until almost a year later. I'm not charging it any differently. I'm actually using wireless charging almost hundred percent of the time, putting it on the charger at night. That's what I did last year and the year before that, and then put it on wireless chargers before and then of course lightning cable chargers before we had wireless so I've been charging it the same way for many many years and i'm still seeing poor results as far as overall battery life you'll see here yesterday i only had three hours and eight minutes of screen active time five hours and 59 minutes of screen idle time and used over 75 percent of my battery that means under maybe four or five hours of screen on time which is pretty terrible Today, I've had two hours and 33 minutes of screen active time. I've even charged it a little bit today and we're at 25% usage. So it's really not doing very well for me. You'll see phone took up 20% and I barely use the phone. So definitely it needs some improvements. It's a beta, so I don't really hold it against it, but it's definitely a concern. Let's take a look at one of your battery lives as well, just to see if you're seeing the same thing. Now this was sent in by Abishek on an iPhone 11 pro max with 95% battery health. And he had three hours and 25 minutes of screen on time, a one hour and 24 minutes of screen off time and used about 45% of his battery. So again, not great battery life. Hopefully it gets a little bit better going forward. As far as overall performance though, it's been quite good. No issues here whatsoever with speed scrolling, going into different apps, switching between different apps, even on older devices. I'm not really seeing any issues here. So you'll see here, if we go in on an iPhone 11, seems pretty fast. It's just loading over Wi-Fi. If we go over maybe to let's go into shortcuts, go back, go into music, things seem to load nice and fast. I really haven't had any issues whatsoever with performance and it's nice and fast with ProMotion as well. So ProMotion seems to be as fast as before, no issues whatsoever there or with Geekbench as I showed before. Overall heat of the device is nice and cool. It's still nice and cool to the touch. Let's take a look with the thermal camera quickly. It's barely warm though. And in the hottest area, we're at about 33.1 or two degrees Celsius, and that's about 92.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's doing pretty well overall, no complaints there whatsoever. As far as overall comments and what you had to say, let's go into the YouTube community poll and you'll see here we have 8,600 votes and 114 comments. Let's take a look at some of your comments. Chris Palmer 4983 said using iOS 16.4.1 on my iPhone 14 pro public release is still glitchy. I've been disappointed with Apple this year. Battery life is okay, but nowhere near smooth and polished as in customary with Apple products. My current daily driver is my Samsung galaxy S 23 ultra. I've had mine since the pre-orders released and it's very smooth and polished far better performance than compared to iPhone 14 pro. And while technically that's not true on paper, many people are saying the same thing lately. I'm hearing a lot of people saying iOS is super buggy. So I thought I'd just mention this comment as it seems to be something I'm seeing more and more. 
iOS 16.5 beta 2. So far, so good. It's on my iPhone 8 plus I've had for several years already waiting for my iPhone 13 to arrive. So far, I've seen a little bit better battery life on my iPhone 14 on 16.5 beta 2. On beta 1 and some other iOS 16.4 builds, the battery was draining faster than expected, so that should be fixed by now. Luis Fernando Astorga says, iOS 16.5 beta 2, same bugs for me, the keyboard sound one is even more annoying, same notifications glitch on the animation, better battery life than iOS 16.4, although my phone heats a lot again iPhone 14 Pro Max. On beta 2, I had a strange issue where TikTok ate my entire battery overnight. It hasn't happened before updating to beta 2, and I haven't got that to happen again. Maybe TikTok? Shrug. And I find that to be true with TikTok or Facebook. They seem to use a lot of battery in the background. So whatever they're doing is using a lot of power. And so that's everything with iOS 16.5 beta 2. Expect beta 3 hopefully this coming week. And iOS 17, of course, is where we'll see a lot of different features or at least stability at this point. I think that hopefully will be their focus and I think it should be at this point. Let me know what you think in the comments below and of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.